What's going on guys and gals? Chris with the Bod Damn channel. I'm actually live. I'm about to do a quick chest finisher workout. And at the end, we'll answer some Q&A and get some little workout chest related tips in there as well. But anyways, welcome to my channel. Don't forget to subscribe. All right. Um, what I do basically is, you know, it's a food, fitness and healthy living kind of channel. And I want to make sure to show you guys a little bit about how it you know goes down and how to build an awesome body and really you know how to take control of your life and enjoy it for what it is so in this workout today we're going to do a, a basically a chest finisher so i've already worked out my chest today in fact i've worked out my chest my shoulders my triceps and i've done some hit workouts as well and in this one right here the basically a chest finisher is something that you do to kind of just finish the whole thing off now, I was at the gym an hour ago, so the chest finishers typically should be done after your chest workout, like directly after. But since I had to come home and do a couple things and open up this live broadcast, I really didn't get a chance to do it back to back. But typically what you want to do is you want to visit the finisher workout right at the end of your chest workout. And anytime that you deal with a finisher workout, you have to remember that um, it's occurring at the tail end of your workout or the, at the end of your chest or push day. And so therefore, you know, the weights that you use or the bands that you use and all that kind of stuff shouldn't be super, super heavy because that's the time of the workout where things can go wrong. And if you use too much weight, you're going to have to, you know, still control it, balance it. And a lot of things can go wrong right at that point in time. So uh, the weights you're going to be seeing me use are going to be really light, you know, and that's what is there. It's there for a purpose, right? Because a finisher, like I said earlier, should never have extremely, uh, you know, crazy weight or shouldn't put you in compromising positions that you can't get out of. So, um, but yeah, we'll be seeing more finishers on my channel. Essentially what I'm going to do today is I'm going to start off the finisher workout with five chest flies. All right. And a lot of the things I'm doing are going to be on the incline bench because I mean, the most powerful look out of the chest a lot of times occurs by doing a lot of emphasis on your upper chest. All right. So right now I have no pump whatsoever. Um, I was at the gym, like I said, an hour ago, maybe even like an hour and a half ago. So this is kind of like my everyday look right here. And it's not too bad. But when we get on this uh, little micro workout, I think you're going to understand. You're going to see what a kind of a chest pump kind of looks like. Right. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. But always be happy with the kind of body that you're striving for. And once you get there, you know, be happy with what you got. So I'm pretty happy. This is an everyday kind of look. It looks pretty good. Um, I'm running about 10% body fat right now. Anyway, so uh, let's talk about the very first thing. We're going to be doing about uh, four things, okay? And the first thing is going to be a chest fly. So basically an inclined chest fly like this, all right? But we're going to be doing it with four second negatives, okay? We're going to be doing five reps of that. We're going to follow it up after that with five reps of close incline dumbbell pressing. And you'll be seeing that here in a second. But that will not have a four second down. It's just going to be five of those. Actually, maybe I'll do 10 of them. So I'll do 10 reps of that. So back to back, 10 really quick reps. And then I'll do 10 press movements. Okay. Then I'll just move the weights to this position. I'll do 10 pressing movements. It's going to start to hurt. And then after that, I'm going to get on the floor back here. I'm going to pick up one of those um, kind of medicine ball looking things and I'm going to do five on each side of these like transfer ball push-ups and you're going to see that in the background. So I'm going to try to get three rounds of this, but I might only get two. So we'll see what happens. I'll be, you know, I'll be slightly winded. It's not a big deal, um, but I'm going to open it up at the end of this for any Q&A. So, if, you know, while you're watching this, be thinking about your questions and uh, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. All right. So I'm going to start right now. We're going to get the very first thing done which is five chest flies. So here are my 20s right here at 20 pound weights. And we're doing some incline dumbbell chest flies, all right? So up here, and we're gonna get four second down, all right? One, two, three, four, hold and bring it up. All right, one, two, three, four. Nice stretch, bring it up and a nice squeeze. One, two, three, four. Bring it up. Good squeeze in the middle part of the chest. One, two, three, four. Up again. And last one. Here's the fifth rep. All right. So that's the fifth rep. Then I'm going to merge them together. Since these are hex weights, it's a lot easier to merge these together. When you have circular weights or circular discs at the end of your weights, it's going to be much harder. So be careful. But with the hex ones, it's a lot easier. You can just mesh them together like this. I'm going to do 10 close incline presses. Here we go. One, two. And what I'm really doing is focusing on my chest 
and the pump. I'm really focusing on getting, you know, my chest and my front deltoid really to move. I think that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, then I'll move to this position to do 10 presses. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, starting to hurt a lot, nine, and 10. Always squeeze your chest. Okay, so the hardest part is probably coming up, and that's going to be these transfer ball push-ups. So I'm going to try to get these done real quick. You can see in the background, essentially, I'm going to get a medicine ball that looks like this, put it on the ground. And the key to doing a finisher is to try to merge it together as fast as possible. I'll probably only get two sets of this whole entire thing. Okay, so a transfer ball push-up. I'm going to do a push-up on one side. I'm going to transfer the ball on the other side. I'm going to do a five on each side. Here we go. There's one. Transfer the ball. Stay in the plank position. There's two. Three. Four, I'll do 10 of these. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and one more. Why not one more? All right. So that's the very first thing right there. We're going to pick up the weights again and go through the whole thing. I think two sets is enough. Ah. <sighs> All right, here we go. All right, four second down. All right, and then up, five reps only. All right. This hurts. It's really starting to burn a lot right now. Oh. I think my chest will be definitely finished after this. All right, 10 close grip uh, pushes. Here we go. One. Ten of these. side transfer ball push-ups all right here we go That's two sets. I think the chest is pretty much finished. So yeah, we saw the before picture. This is the after right here. You know, not too bad. Chest looking pretty strong. Uh, anyway, you know, usually when I film videos, I can take my time, get my breath back and everything, but we're here live. So we're gonna move it now to the Q and A portion of uh, the broadcast so if you have any questions let me know i'll try to answer them all right so all right so what we started with were five incline chest flies with a dumbbell remember anytime you do a finisher workout you want to use pretty light weights all right we started with five incline chest presses with four second downs all right so did that we followed up with 10 close incline presses since these are hex dumbbells it was easy for me to put together i'm coming down to here and i'm bringing it up to here using my front deltoid upper chest everything up to here all right 
I followed that up with 10 incline presses. So down to here, up and squeeze, right? You get this part of the chest. Close it out with transfer ball push-ups, which is the hardest thing. Um, but yeah, I did five on each side of that. Push up, one hand on the ball, right? You do a push up, then you rotate the ball this way, stay in a plank position, do the push up. And so if you need some more uh, kind of, uh, how did that go down? Just rewind the video and take a look. Transfer ball push ups always occur in a plank position. If you are a beginner and you want to do these things, you can do them on your knees, you can do a knee plank, and that's okay. Now you can do this workout, all right, at the gym on your next chest day. It's a workout, it's kind of like a superset kind of thing. But essentially, it's a finisher. So do this at the end of your chest workout. And uh, use much lighter weight if you need to, all right? I typically, when I do a normal incline uh, bench dumbbell workout with, you know, sets reverse pyramid training, sets of threes, then fives and sixes and eights, I'll be working in weight ranges of 90 pound dumbbells all the way up to like 110 pound dumbbells, stuff like that. So you can see really how light this is as a finisher because this is the stuff at the tail end of the workout, and this is not like primary mass building stuff, but it is there to finally exhaust that chest muscle to where tomorrow, you know, when I go like this and I can kind of feel the chest, I'll know it got a really, really good workout. So finisher workouts are really good. You can do them with any body part. And if you enjoy this video, then make sure you're commenting. If you're watching this right now and it says live, I'm here, I can answer a couple of your questions for you. I see some people live right now. We have Abu, Ebu Sinera, and we have Yusuf Zasan, I think. So Abu says, good, and uh, Yusuf says, wow, good job. So thanks a lot. Um, don't be scared of doing this kind of stuff. And uh, don't forget to also put a lot of emphasis when you're working out on your upper chest. Because if you want to get that good, you know, powerful look, you're going to need to work on your upper chest a lot. A lot of people just sit there and they bench press days and days of bench pressing, right? Problem is... The bench press doesn't really super target. It targets the entire region, but it doesn't really super target the uh, the front uh, or the top of the chest. And so that's where you're going to need dumbbells. You're going to need things that separate, okay? That separate a lot and can get you pretty, you know, down there. Uh, incline barbell bench press is pretty good. Don't get me wrong, but I love good old dumbbells. I love good old flies and good old negatives, right? Negatives are awesome too. The push-ups, I find that the push-ups really help with the width, right? So when you want to get your chest kind of wide, I find that the push-ups really help with that. But when it comes down to a good squeeze, a lot of times I don't get the super squeeze with a push-up. I get a really good squeeze in a fly movement, right? Something that goes like this. I'll get a good squeeze if I use a spree band and I attach it to the bottom of something and I swing it across my chest like this. You can kind of see the squeeze. Um, any kind of cable flying motion will definitely help the squeeze. It's tough to get the squeeze when you're doing bench pressing and stuff like that because your arms are here and they're never really ever crossing, you know, your chest muscle. They're always just here and here. So you're using a lot of muscles and you build a fair amount of mass. When it comes to really defining the chest, you're going to have to do finishers and things with dumbbells and stuff like that. So. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's a live video. It's my very first one. So go easy on me. Hit the like button if you found some value in this. And uh, like I said, don't forget to try this at home. Don't forget to use light weights because this is the tail end of the workout. You would implement a finisher like this. And if you have any other suggestions of things that you want to see on the BODM channel, then let me know down below as well in a comment. And uh, I will see you on the next BODM video. We're going to have many more of these. Take it easy. Goodbye.